everyone, I'm Abigail, this is Bella, and welcome to another Two Kids Dinner. Today we are joined by award-winning author Eric Walters. Mr. Walters has written well over a hundred books in many different genres, and most of them middle grade. Thank you. And in March 2024, he has a new middle grade book, Call Me Al, coming out. And then in May, another book, this one titled The Club. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks for having me. It should be fun. Most of your books are for kids our age. Thank you. Why is middle grade the age group you enjoy writing for the most? Well, I think it's the age that I taught for the most. I, I taught everything from K to 8, but I was mainly in grade 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Those are the grades I taught, so that's what I write for for the most part. So they're middle grade, plus some YA, plus some first chapter books. I write everything. You have written a lot of different genres over the year. Do you have a favorite? Yes. I like uh, historical fiction, contemporary series, contemporary funny, um, picture books, nonfiction, um, animal books, sports books, uh, dystopian, and picture books. I I'm not a fantasy guy. Other than that, I write everything. Your upcoming book, Call Me Al, de deals with racism. In recent years, you've also written about the Holocaust, homelessness, and LGBTQ. It seems that there has been an increase in heavier, in heavier social themes in your books. Can you tell us why that has be become more important in your writing? I think that those are some of the books that have social justice issues that are heavier, but also I've just had the Space Trilogy, which has nothing to do with that. Um, I like to write what amuses me or what interests me at the time. Now, some of those books um, was a co-write with Paul um, on the line, was a co-write with Wally, and a co-write with Kathy Kaser. Those books tend to be more serious, my co-writes with people. How much research had to go into Broken Strings, and did any of it get overwhelming at any point? Well, the original idea for Broken Strings I came up with, and I called Kathy. Kathy Kaser is not only probably the world's expert on um, writing books about the Holocaust, but she's also a real musical theater person. Her son, uh, Jake Epstein, was on Degrassi Street. He starred on Broadway's Spider-Man. He was a lead in the Carol King. So having Kathy as a co-writer meant that the two biggest parts of that book, the Jewishness, the Holocaust, and musical theater, were just down her, her alley. She knew everything about them. When you take on a, ser a serious topic, how hard is it to make the book uplifting at, by the end? I think I always end with hope. Um, even when I'm dealing with difficult subjects, my books end with a, with a sense of optimism and hope because I think that's the way to live your life, with optimism and hope. There's enough going wrong in the world that we have to allow the stories that, where things end hopefully and nicely. We need that, all of us. What is your process when putting a book together? Oh, do I'm, you decide the end before the middle, or do you put it together in order? I'm, I start at the beginning and move to the end. I'm a, a classic plotter. They talk about people being pantsers, flying by the seat of their pants, and people who are plotters. I'm a plotter. I work out my story in advance. I figure out what the chapters are going to be, and then I write from there. It doesn't mean I follow the, the plot. Um, it's like when I drive, I have a GPS that tells me where to go. But sometimes I'm driving and the GPS changes along the way, gives me other routes. Sometimes uh, something bad happens or something good happens. So I want to stop. I was in uh, Cape Breton and my GPS said to me, in 200 meters, turn right. What it didn't seem to tell me was that there was a river between me and the 200 meters. It seemed to neglect that there was a ferry there. Um, I had to get across this river. And I think, come on, no one would actually drive into a river following their GPS. Go on YouTube. You'll see people driving into rivers following their GPSs. So I have a plot, but I don't necessarily follow it all the time. And my wife just brought me a cup of tea. Should I see if she can get one of you two a cup of tea? She's well, if you want. Okay. Next question. As you mentioned, a few of your books you have written with a with a co-author. How does your process change when, when writing with someone else? Well, you've got to be more organized. You've got to plot the story even more. But you also have to be open to people making suggestions, going in directions you don't necessarily want. And it's like a marriage. You have to pick somebody that you like and understand there's going to be some disagreements, but you work through the disagreements to make things better. 
It's a great process. I love working with other people. Writing a book is a big commitment. So when you come up with an idea, how do you become sure that this is a story you want to tell? Well, I have more ideas than I have stories. So I try and find the ones that are most playful for me. And sometimes they come out of nowhere. I was working on a story called Crime Writer about a children's writer like me who does presentations like me, who travels around the world like me, who writes about an international assassin. And it turns out the children's writer actually is an international assassin who kills people. This is not autobiographic. I don't kill people. But I'm in the middle of that book. And some, some young lady in uh, Campbell River said, what would you write about if you were a teacher here? And I outlined the whole story. And it grabbed me so much. That's the story I'm writing now. It's called Romano and Julia. I'm rewriting Shakespeare. We have interviewed a number of authors who've had books banned in certain places. That means in those places, kids don't have the same access to books we do, we have, and may not see themselves re represented in, in books. Can you give us your thoughts on this? I was recently boycotted in a, in a community in Manitoba because of the book I wrote with Paul Katja on the line they didn't like the lbgtq content in it um i i think that certain books are not appropriate for certain grades for example my book on the hall on um the R rwanda genocide it's a grade seven eight nine book i don't think grade two should be reading it i don't want to ban it but i don't think that there's certain things that are appropriate level wise and some books because of the sensitive material are best as a read aloud so the teacher can work with you or the parent to go through the content that might be disturbing. What writer has had the most influence on you? Well, growing up was Farley Mowat. I loved his books. But I also read a book by an adult writer when I was about 16. It was called The Apprenticeship of Duddy Kravitz. And that book I could identify with more than any book I'd ever read before. And I think that really inspired me in life. Books can inspire you in life. What advice do you have for young writers? I think the same advice I have for young basketball players. If you want to be a good basketball player, play ball. If you want to be a good writer, write. If you want to be a good basketball player, listen to your coaches. If you want to be a good writer, listen to your coaches. They're called teachers. If you want to be a good basketball player, watch good people play. If you want to be a good writer, read good people. You'll learn from them. I've learned more from um, Ernest Hemingway than anybody I've ever actually met. In terms of writing, John Steinbeck has inspired me. That's big advice. Do you also have a smaller tip, something you do when you are writing that maybe a lot of people don't? No, I'm, I, I do different things on the day. So I, I start my day with a list of things I'm supposed to do. I'm very organized. And I'll, I'll, on the list of things like I have to ride my bike, I have to pick up my grandson. I picked up my grandson today. When I'm writing, I write for a while and I change pace. I go on my bike for a while. I write for a while, I go for a walk. I write for a while, I do something different that way. And it refreshes the writing process. So today I've done six pages between other things. You said that you are writing a book based off of Romeo and Juliet. Will there be more pressure since it's a classic story people know? Um, I, I think it's going to be so different in so many ways, including the ending. I don't know if you two know what happens at the end of Romeo and Juliet. Romeo and Juliet both kill themselves. What a terrible ending to a book. I have my character, Julia and Cody, his last name is Romano, solving things, working with their parents to help them understand how to make things better and bringing the families together. And again, I can deal with some heavy stuff, but I want to end with hope. You need hope in your life. That's what kids need these days more than ever, some hope. And what's Shakespeare going to do? He's been dead for hundreds of years. He's not going to complain. If he does, I'm scared. You totally just spoiled Roman and Juliet for us. Don't read it. Don't read it. You don't want to. Read Romano and Juliet. It'll make you happier. Finally, it's time for our bulletin. Ten rapid-fire questions. Are you ready? I'm ready. Number one. What is your favorite phrase to you? My favorite phrase? Um, if I have a favorite phrase, don't give up. Number two, what is one subject you'd love to learn more about? Space. 
Number three, what is your go-to snack food? Oven baked potato chips. Number four, what is what what was your favorite book growing up? Owls in the Family by Farley Mollet. Number five, if you could teleport somewhere right now, where would you go? If I could teleport somewhere right now. I'm so happy exactly where I am. If I could take my wife with me, I'd be in San, uh, Los Angeles right now. Number six. If you could have one superpower, what would it be? Flight. Number seven. What was your favorite cartoon as a kid? Bugs Bunny. Number eight. What was your favorite rainy day activity? Watching TV. Watching Bugs Bunny. Number nine. If you could have any three dinner guests, who would they be? Any three dinner guests. Oh, Dolly Parton, The Rock, and Peter Gabriel. Number 10. What was the best piece of advice you were ever given? Don't give up. You were awesome. Thank you so much for doing that. And thank you well, so you're... much for spending this time with us. We can't well, wait. You two are pretty awesome as well. So now you should tell your parents, we were so awesome. We deserve a treat. Where are you gonna what are you gonna take us? We deserve something special. Well, maybe we could get some of my trick-or-treats. Some. I think you should get all of it. Eat it all right now. You may get sick, but it's worth it.